Sup dudes, welcome back to the channel. So today I got this comment, e-bike builder, could you do a ride one up investigation? Thinking about getting their cafe cruiser, but skeptical about their so-called 750 watt sustained motor. Thank you for that comment. And sure, I can do that. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at ride one up. So before I buy anything that's thousands of dollars, I typically go and I look at the company. That's, you know, that's not unusual, right? So let's take a look at the company. And usually there's like an about us page, right? So, and so even as I'm scrolling down this page, there's something that catches my eye here. Why choose Ride One Up? So it says U.S. company, San Diego, CA, making e-bikes since 2018. So, I mean, I was just scrolling down the page, and this is what I'm trying to figure out. This is what I'm wondering. And I haven't even got to the bottom of the page yet, and they are already on top of it. So this is like, this is a, you know, this is a good-looking website. It's a professionally designed website, right? I'm a web developer, so that's kind of my judgment on this website. So here's all their bikes. We're just scrolling past. So we're going down to the About Us page, right? Let's look at Ride One Up the company so it says we're ride one up make some pretty great electric bikes nice big picture taking up above the fold it's kind of a it's kind of a lot but all right so it says our mission is simple get more people on e-bikes blah 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 let's watch this video I grew up in a Dutch household where the focus was on biking and I didn't have a car until I was 21. I started. Okay. So right here, we've got Kevin Duggar, the ride one up founder. It seems like he's an actual person. Uh, mechanically involved in bikes. When I was at university, I was self-employed fixing up old bikes as a green bike mechanic. Like, all right. So he's got a history as a cyclist and a bike mechanic. We can see him here working on the bikes. He's got he's hands on kind of guy. Getting your hands dirty, cleaning them up, fixing all the components, and it helped me understand what components would last a decade, a lifetime, and which components were just throwaway garbage. About six years ago, I built my first e-bike. It was okay. So he's got a history of building e-bikes. I like it. Freeing and opened up an amazing possibility. It went to research. And so when he's talking about that freeing, opening up possibilities. That sounds genuine to me. Like he, you know, he's experienced the wonderful possibilities of e-bikes and he, now he's making them. So let's learn more. Okay. Why, why can't I find a good e-bike that has quality components that's not two grand? Right, good question. There wasn't a good reason. And so I figured the best way to do this was do it yourself. All right, I like this guy. I like this guy. You can't get something done right, do it yourself. The intent of riding a bike's in the beginning. And that looks like a slick bike. I just gotta say. <laughs> Our mission statement were to replace your car. With that idea, it really All right, so here we've got Daniel, the Ride One Up CEO. Looks like a cool guy. He's got a baseball cap on, kind of hanging out. It hits home to what we're trying to build here. It's really exciting that you know we're building an efficient mode of transportation. But at the same time, we're also creating a product that can be used for many. Oh, look at that belt drive. I like that. I like that. Different use cases. It doesn't just have to be for commuting. We're trying to make all of our builds a little bit more useful for any trip that you want to do. Farmer's market, grocery stores, going to the beach, going out with friends. And we're trying to think of how it could be more practical for daily life. It doesn't just have to be for commuting. It could be for running errands, you know, putting a set of panier bags on the back of your bike. There's a lot of different use cases, and you know, we're just really scratching the surface at this point. We do focus now on bikes for different lifestyles. We have our Roadster, which is a nice urban bike. We have feet. I do, I really like how they have so many different bikes and different varieties of bikes. They have the different frame sizes. There's a lot of variety here, and I like it. Constantly working on our videos and tutorials on how to service and maintain your bike so it can last a lifetime. And he's not kidding, guys. Like, I've I've looked at some of the Ride One Up videos, and their, their YouTube channel is really good. They've got a lot of video. Like, I watched a video on identifying motor noises. 
from Ride from Ride One Up, and they've got some good videos. So make sure that you go check out Ride One Up's chan their YouTube channel. They've got some good content. All right, so that that was Ride One Up. Hopefully, I don't get a copyright strike for that. They have a lot of good videos, so make sure that you check it out. Overall, this this video has me feeling pretty good. I you know, there's the founder and there's the CEO. They kind of just we kind of just met them there and got a feel for how they are as people, right? So I like that. I like how they've got the founder and the CEO in a video riding around the bikes, talking about the bikes. Right? So that that makes me feel you know good about this. Let's keep going down. So the return policy seems reasonable. They do have some rules about like the odometer has to be less than 20 miles. Um So with wired e-bikes it was 10 miles on ride one up it's 20 miles. I think that's more reasonable. I mean, it's super easy to go 10 miles on an e-bike, especially when it's a bike that goes 30 miles an hour, you know? So, I mean, the the returns, they seem reasonable. I don't know about the Rev 1 and the 14-day return policy. So, let's see. So, they have an address, and it looks like it's San Diego. This, look. let's see, is this just a warehouse or is this oh look over here ride one up bicycle shop so it seems like they have a storefront let's go into the street view and see what this looks like okay so there it is ride one up <clears throat> we can see it right there so this is San Diego there is the ride one up uh shop right there it's okay guys so i mean i usually look through the website look through the about us stuff maybe like five minutes just to get a feel for the company and what's going on and if there's no red flags and there's nothing that's kind of like yeah then we're gonna keep we're, well let's go look at the bike let's go look at this bike for my good friend in the comments and so this guy no one six two one four He's a little bit skeptical about that Cafe Cruiser and the 750 watt sustained motor. So let's go take a look at that Cafe Cruiser now for my good friend in the comments. Let's go back up here. E-bikes. Cafe Cruiser. There it is. Nice and easy to get to it. Only had to click once. I think you would still have to step over that. It doesn't look like a true step through, but... Either way, let's see here. Let's go back to this one. Step over. I think it's a good looking bike. Um, you know, I mean, it, it looks like a good looking bike. I like how it looks. I like how that rack is just welded onto the frame. So it should be able to hold, you know, like a good 75 to, you know, 100 pounds or more. Usually when you have the rack welded onto the frame like that. So that's good. It's like it comes with a headlight. I like the wire management. It's got internal routing. So on the surface, I like how this bike looks. All right, so let's take a good look at it here. There it is. There is the step over one that we're looking at here. So we got some more pictures from the side, from the back. It's a good looking bike. Oh, wow. Wait, where is that picture? I want to see the baby carrier. Look at that thing. Holy buckets. Let me know in the comments, guys. Would you put your kid in one of these things? That just seems crazy to me. I mean, it does have that, that rack on the back that's welded on there. That's definitely the only way that I would carry a baby back there, buddy. Wow. So, I've got a couple colors. Looks like three of them. So what do we got here? So what is this called? Carbon. Indigo. I like that. Indigo. That looks pretty cool. All right. And then so this is the lat. Is that what they call it? Lat? Oh, latte. 
<laughs> what? So this color is called latte. Is that right? All right, so I guess this color is called latte. Like that just really threw me off there, but that's that's interesting. Latte, that's what we're looking at, that color. All right, so, so far I'm feeling pretty good about Ride One Up. We're checking out this bike. In terms of how it looks, I'm feeling pretty good about how it looks. So let's go down, look at the specs a little bit more. And then it's got a cassette, so that's good. You want a cassette and not a freewheel, right? So hub motor, it's either gonna have threads on it that's for a freewheel that you screw onto those threads or else it'll have a cassette that goes onto splines and the cassettes are a lot better. So that's good that it has a cassette and not a freewheel. Okay, so here is kind of the tricky part to discern is with this motor, right? So let's go back to this this question. Let's address this question right here from my good friend no one 6214 in the comments. So he's thinking about getting the Cafe Cruiser, but skeptical about the so-called 750 watt sustained motor. And so your skepticism is not unwarranted because this is a way that manufacturers kind of like trick you into thinking that an e-bike is more powerful than it actually is. So let's take a look at this Cafe Cruiser motor. And all they tell us is 48 volts, geared hub, Bafong motor, 750 watts sustained. So that is kind of a question, is they're telling us it's a Bafong motor and they're saying 750 watts sustained. So it's kind of like they're, they're not saying that it's a 750 watt motor. They're saying it's a Bafang motor with 750 watts sustained. It's kind of like a, it's kind of, I don't like when manufacturers do this. It's a little bit misleading because as you're looking at this, you're just looking at the numbers, right? So you're at 48 volts, okay, Bafang, okay. 750 watts, okay, and then you think it's a 750 watt motor, right? Like that's what they're trying to do here. And this isn't unique to ride one up. Um, you know, lots of e-bike manufacturers do it. It is a little bit unfortunate that Ride One Up is doing it. Uh, you know, I mean, in the past, Rad Power Bikes has done this, where they'll put a 500 watt motor in a bike, and then they'll they'll call it 750 watts peak or like 750 watts sustained. And anytime you see sustained or peak you can like that's that's not that's kind of misleading when you're when you're talking about a motor and you're describing the the power levels of a motor you generally talk about the nominal power levels just kind of the normal power levels and not like the peak maximum sustained power levels right so it's a little bit misleading right here the 750 watts sustained and there's really no way to tell, like, unless you have somebody, like, if you have somebody with the bike and they have, and you can look at the model numbers and, and actually see, like, the Bafong model numbers, like, it'll probably say on this motor somewhere 500 watts, because I have a feeling that it's a 500 watt motor. And so the clue here is the controller. And a lot of the times, manufacturers they don't tell you the amperage of the controller and that is what we need to know to calculate what the true power of this e-bike is right because there's something called ohm's law and it's basically to figure out power or watts you multiply the voltage by the amperage and that's how you can figure out the watts so if we take 48 volts times 18 amps. And actually we're gonna do uh, 54.6 times 18 amps. So that is 982 watts peak, right? So that is the, the peak 
power that this motor is going to be able to do on a full battery with this controller it's going to be doing 982 watts and then of course as you discharge the battery that's going to go down a little bit as the voltage drops but so about it's about nine about a thousand watts peak on this motor and so this is a clue right because usually a true Bafong 750 watt motor is gonna have like a at least like a 22 amp controller if not a 25 amp controller and it's gonna be doing more like 1500 watts on a true 750 watt motor so this kind of misleading wording combined with with this right here they're telling us that it's an 18 amp controller I have a feeling that this is a 500 watt motor and they're just saying 750 watt sustained to make it seem like it's a 750 watt motor when it really isn't and so we can go look on the internet and try and figure this out a little bit so here I am on bikeride.com we're looking at this bike and I found a clue down here right here in this review and notice that up here on on this bike ride listing it'll say 750 watts right here but I think that's the number that they got from the manufacturer but if we come down here and we're looking at this cafe cruiser and this is a review And so in this review, it's saying Bafang 500 watt rear hub motor capable of over 750 watts sustained. And I think this is probably the truth of the matter here is that this bike is a 500 watt motor. And they're just kind of saying 750 watts sustained in the advertising to give you the, you know, to kind of mislead you. The good old, you know, e-bike manufacturer trick. Give them the peak power. So they've got some suggestions for accessories. And, oh, wow. So the battery is $489. Let's take a look at the battery quick as long as it's right under my mouse cursor. So it's a re-engine Rhino replacement or backup battery. This is a 48 volt, 15 amp hour Samsung. What I'm guessing is that this means that there's 39 total cells in the battery. So if it's 48 volts, that means that we've got 13 cells in series and then 15 amp hours. So I'm assuming that they've got 39 cells. There's 13 in series and then there's three in parallel. So we've got 13S 3P battery. I'm assuming it's a Samsung 50E 5,000 milliamp hour cells. It's $500 for a new battery, for a 15 amp hour battery. So it must be good cells if it's so expensive. So let's go look at Samsung 50Es. So allegedly, these are the same batteries that are on the Wired Freedom e-bike, these Samsung 50Es. So yeah, they're, they're five, and I'm not exactly sure that these are the batteries that are in this Cafe Cruiser, but it's probably something like this because you get 13 of these in series is gonna get you that 48 volts and then get three of them in parallel and that would get you up to 15 amp hours so the discharge rating on these is 9.8 amps so I think that if we have three rows if we have three parallel groups of these cells and each parallel group can do that 10 amps then I think this battery should be capable of doing about 30 amps max discharge and it's probably a pretty lightweight battery so it is a pretty good battery 
I wonder how much just the cells for this battery would cost if you wanted to repack it. Let's go see. Okay, so we would need 36 cells to build this battery. And so that would be... If you're only buying 36 cells, that's not a very good deal. So we've got... This is 485 times 36... So the cells in this battery, if you were to buy those cells, they would be about $175 without any tax or shipping or anything. That's just the, the price of the cells. So the cells are about $175, and then you've got you know the battery case and the BMS and the other materials that you need to build the battery in there as well. But that's just kind of like a general idea of how much it would cost to get some new cells in the battery is about $175 if you were getting these Samsung 50Es, which is what I'm guessing that they are. Okay, so that is the battery. So then what about the real world range of this e-bike? How far are we gonna get on this thing? How far do they tell us again? What does it say? Where is it? Range. 30 to 50 miles, depending on rider weight, terrain, incline, level assist, etc. So, 30 to 50 miles is what they're telling us. And so, to me, miles isn't the most useful way to, to give you an estimate of range. I like to base my range estimates more on, like, just how much power does the bike use and then generally speaking like how long should you be able to use the bike so then if we have some idea of how long or how many minutes we should be able to use that bike at full power that'll give us kind of an idea of the range that we can get in miles based on kind of our average speed and so to do this, it's a simple calculation. We've got an 18 amp controller. So that means that this controller, when you're doing full power, you're giving it the juice. It's doing 18 amps, right? And so this is a 15 amp hour battery. So that means that you could do 15 amps for an hour, or you could do one amp for 15 hours like that's kind of that's what 15 amp hours means right so if this thing has a 15 amp hour battery and we're we're going full power 18 amps that means that this battery is going to last less than one hour right so let's let's divide 15 by 18 So that is, and then multiply it by 60, so it's about 50 minutes that you can ride this bike at full power before that battery is going to drain. And of course, if you're, if you're on a lower pedal assist level, like if you're, on a, if you're on half power, then you could go twice as long, right? Or, you know, sometimes your bike is coasting down a hill and you're not using any power. So there are things that you can do to extend that range. But I think that's kind of like a, an easier way to look at e-bike range is how long can you ride the bike in minutes? And that's an easy calculation based on the amp hours of the battery and then the amps of the controller. And so the amps of the controller, that's the full power, like the highest pedal assist. That's, that's what this, these amps are. That's the max power on that controller. Okay, so at this point, I kind of looked over the Cafe Cruiser. That, those are kind of my thoughts. Um, hopefully I answered your question here, my good friend, in the comments. I do believe that what this is saying here is that this is actually a 500 watt nominal motor right so it's not like a true 750 watt motor it's a little bit misleading I'm not a big fan of when manufacturers do that but you know ride one up they're not the only manufacturer that does that so it's it's you know 
Like, some of them do it, some of them don't. I prefer when they don't. Um, I mean, it, I like how it looks, but yeah, it's a little bit underpowered, and your skepticism was not unwarranted. So, I would consider it more of like a 500 watt e-bike, basically. So that was the Cafe Cruiser. Let's go look at the Rev 1, because this is a bike that I featured back in my May e-bikes pick video. And so this is a moped style e-bike. And I like it, right? I like it. It's it's cool looking moped style e-bike. I like how there's these accessories, like the center storage cage. I think that is awesome. Like imagine that cage right in the middle there. Like how much stuff you could put in there. Or like another, like look at all that room for a battery in there, right? Like wow. It looks like it could be a cool e-bike. So I did suggest it back in May, but... I noticed that some people were having problems with it and they might have been shipping with a chain that was too short or like chain tension issues. So I just wanted to show you guys that because I saw that recently and that was kind of interesting. Alright, so here we are on the Manny Reed TV YouTube channel. So this is somebody that I'm subscribed to and I watch. Uh, he focuses on the modernization of travel featuring electric bikes. Um, he reviews EVs, mods, accessories, and builds. So he had a video about his Rev 1. And he's got a lot of videos on the Rev 1 if you're interested. I think he's got one where he actually crashed it at some point. Oh yeah, right here, Pothole Wrecked. So he's got a lot of cool videos riding e-bikes. Uh, looks like he's got a Rev 1. So let's look at this video. So 750 rear motor detached from rear hub. So he's having a problem with the rear, with the, he's having a problem with the Rev 1. Let's take a look at this. And Manny Reed, I love you, buddy. I'm not trying to copyright and fringe here. We're just like trying to promote you, man. We're trying to spread awareness. So let's pause this. There he is. Or, there he is. There's my boy. There he goes. I like his I like his intro. It's not too long. I appreciate that, Manny. Now let's scrub through this and figure out where he's showing us. Let's let him talk a little bit here. Shortly after the last Rev one video that you all probably saw from last week. The stripping of the rear hub got even worse. This is pretty crazy. Like you can see <laughs> oh my god, like look at this. All the way around here. That is crazy. This hub actually detached from the rear hub motor, the wheel in the motor. It's a pretty crazy <laughs> So this is crazy guys, like so what I understand, from my understanding, is these e-bikes were shipping with a chain that was too short. It was just slightly too short, so the chain tension was a little bit tight. And apparently, if your chain tension is too tight on, on this bike, and I don't know if Manny did anything else that might have caused this, but I mean, I think it's just from the chain tension. I don't know that Manny's ever, like taken the wheel off of his bike or like modified or, or done anything that would have caused this so I think this is just from the the short chain I don't think that he ever took the chain off and or like fixed the problem or maybe he wasn't aware of the problem but yeah so I guess these bikes were shipping with a short chain and this is potentially what can happen if you've got a short chain on here with with messed up chain tension so look at this this is pretty crazy if you can see this all the way around here look at that look at that I mean it looks like the motor literally came apart where the freewheel screws on to the the hub like there's a there's a gap there's a hole you can see the bare metal on the inside of the motor so this hub actually detached 
from the rear hub motor, the wheel and the motor. It's so I, I that's crazy to me that that can happen from a chain that's too short. So if you have a Rev One or you're you're getting a Rev One, I'm sure they've probably fixed it by now. If you're buying a new Rev One, but if you bought a Rev One and you never switched the chain on it, I would make sure to get a new chain on it and make sure that it's sized properly because you don't want something like this to happen just because your chain is slightly too short, right? It's a $15 chain and it looks like it destroyed his several hundred dollar motor. Worse, this is pretty crazy. If you can see this all the way around here, this hub actually detached from the rear hub motor, the wheel and the motor. It's some pretty crazy stuff, YouTube. I'm going to show you in a second here. Yeah, so then let's go to the part where he's given it some throttle just so you can see what that sounds like. Let's see here. It's fine. Okay, so I, I guess if he just gives it throttle with the wheel off of the ground, it's actually still spinning. I stand here. So you see, it'll spin just fine, not under load. We're going to torque it out all the way. Fine. We are fully torqued out. Man, that sounds crazy. I can't believe that it's even spinning. You can see. I, I guess I'm I'm a, I'm guessing that it's just spinning from friction. You know, like it's just like something is just pressing against something else, and it's just that friction that is getting everything to spin there. But then when he gets on the bike here, this thing will not spin. Like it's it's not going much at all. So for whatever reason here, and if. Please keep in mind if anybody knows what would cause this. If anybody knows. I think that the short chain costs that, Manny, because <laughs> that is crazy. What would cause this? Please let me know in the comments below how this free will would go from stripping to just completely detaching. Okay, so then he does, he gets on the bike. But check it out one more time. Nothing. Look at that. Look at that. There you go. That shows full voltage there. But I can just stop it with my feet. See that? Yeah, it sounds like something in there is grinding. Or scraping and it's just friction that's causing the bike to move at all anymore but something definitely broke in there I think so that is the development of the rev one everybody so that's kind of interesting so everybody make sure you go like Manny Reed TV because he's got this Rev1 video for us that's showing us some problems here. But yeah, so I just wanted to highlight that one problem that I've noticed with the Rev1 was that they're shipping with short chains. So if you bought a Rev1, make sure to get a new chain on there. Make sure that it's sized correctly and the tension's good. And I think you'll avoid that problem. Alright, so yeah, I mean, I guess just in closing, I guess if I was going to pick one of the Ride One Up bikes, it would be one of these right here. Either the Rift or this Limited. It's probably what I would do. And of course, we could do a whole nother ding video about that. I don't have time for that right now. Let's just... 
So with this 30 amp controller, the Rift is going to be doing about 1600 watts, right? So this bike is going to feel a lot more peppy, a lot more powerful than that Cafe Racer. And then, so let's look at this one quick. So it just says 48 volt, 750 watt geared hub motor. Okay, so then right here, this bike has a 22 amp controller. So this one's not quite as good as the Rift. Yeah, so I guess I'll just leave you guys with that. Like if I, if I was going to pick a bike from Ride One Up, I would probably pick the Rift. I think that... I like kind of mountain bike style bikes, so I think that I would go off the Rift if I was going to get one of these bikes. And it does have fat tires. I know it's not exactly what my good friend in the comments is looking for, but personally, I would either go with the Rift or I would buy the Rev 1 and then I would make sure that that chain isn't too tight or you might end up uh, with a funky motor like my buddy Manny Reed on YouTube. So. Anyways, guys, that was my investigation and my look at Ride One Up Electric Bike Company. I like what they're doing. They have a wide range of e-bikes. It seems like they're kind of value-minded. They're trying to appeal to the, the value-minded crowd that wants as much bike as they can get for the money. Um, Rift looks like a good one. Cafe Cruiser is a little bit underpowered. It's more like a 500 watt e-bike. But yeah, so that's my opinion, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you have a Ride One Up e-bike? How's it going? Has it been treating you well? So also, guys, make sure you like this video because look at this, look at this. Look at all this editing. I took some work, dudes. So make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, probably don't buy the Cafe Racer, and let me know in the comments, guys, you want to see any particular investigation videos, which company should we look at next? What kind of juicy drama can we shovel up? Let me know in the comments, guys. See you next time. Thanks for watching.